In this video, we're going to be delving into the last base tab of PowerPoint 2016, and that is the storyboard tab. Now, on the storyboard tab, you'll notice a lot of these different sections already have pretty much the same information, the same options that we had before on the other tabs of PowerPoint 2016. What's different here are really two, I guess you could count three things. Firstly is shapes, which is primarily what we're going to be talking about today. And then there's storyboard links and storyboard help, which we'll touch on very briefly. Now, storyboard shapes, what this is talking about is basically creating your own mock-up designs within PowerPoint 2016. We live in the day and age where mobile applications and software projects are just a really big deal. They've propagated everything. Microsoft is big on them. They have uh, Visual Studio, their own universal Windows apps that people are making. And they've tried to integrate PowerPoint 2016 into that kind of mindset or to give tools to those type of people, the people who are making presentations based on apps or designing apps. So when you click on storyboard shapes, what it's going to do is open up this storyboard shapes pane. And from here, you actually have a bunch of different mock up items. Uh, this is actually very much what you would see in a visual studio. Um, visual design where you have these different items you can place such as buttons, calendars, um, and then at the top you also have backgrounds which are kind of like these overlays. Um, for instance we drop a Windows phone on there and it's basically giving us a dummy Windows phone where we could load this up with other elements to create a mock-up design. So for instance a drop-down box Let's say that we were doing a presentation and this presentation was supposed to basically say what this app is supposed to do, how it's supposed to look, um, basically it, it, exactly what mockups mean, um, giving you a rough idea of what it's going to look like before it's actually done. So here we're going to have like a text box over here and maybe we have some hyperlinks at the bottom for social media or something like that. And we could even put like a mouse point over here. You probably wouldn't have a mouse point on a phone, obviously, because it's touch based, but you get the idea. Um, you can create these different slides using the storyboard shapes to basically tell a story, tell people what an app is going to be about by creating these designs or mockups straight with the storyboard shapes. And you have a lot of different options here. Windows apps, for instance. You could even go ahead and drop in a keyboard to the screen. So you can tell it's not necessarily Windows mobile apps. It can also be just Windows in general. Now, how you decide to use these shapes precisely is pretty much up to you. And of course, it doesn't have to be specifically Windows stuff in all cases. If you click Find More Storyboard Shapes Online, you can actually see um, that there are quite a few different people creating packs of shapes that you can use within PowerPoint. And these shapes, once again, pretty much anything you want to use if you're designing an interface, if you just want to make a slide look a bit cooler by having icons displayed, whatever you want to use it for, it's really up to you. Now, let's say that you go ahead and create a design that you actually like and you select all of these different items. What if you actually want to make that something you can reuse? Well, you can go back up to shapes and hit either add to my shapes or export my shapes where you can save this onto a file. So let's go ahead and try add to my shapes first. And you can see we've gone ahead and created a storyboard shape. So whenever we want to reuse this image of this really, really badly designed app, we can just drag that onto the uh, screen again, scale it to however we want and it's really simple, it's all in one. And this is a great way to basically copy your efforts wherever you need them. So once again, we can export our shapes. So we want this to be something that goes all over the place, everybody can see it. And uh, we want this to be an item that the whole company uses. Well, we would just save it somewhere and share it with the company however we wanna do that, whether it's gonna be a cloud sharing like Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive, up to you. Likewise, you can import shapes in the same sense where you locate a shapes file somewhere on your computer, somewhere on your network. Um, those two are just for sharing with other people and importing them back into this program. Now let's say that we make some minor changes to this shape as one image object and we make it either bigger or in this case we'll make it wider to kind of make it more like a tablet. And we want to make this the default for our shape. Well, if you have the shape currently selected, 
all you need to do is hit update my shape and it will immediately update over here in the shapes pane. And now if you want to add more items to the shape because we redesigned things like for instance we have a breadcrumb crumb trail which is very common among websites or we could put um, like a link bar. Then we have this here. And just to note, you can also customize the text here. So it doesn't need to just be the dummy text. It could be like homepage, spacebar, and we could put here the blog or the contact, etc. And you can even put hyperlinks here. So this can be basically real information or real links uh, if that's what you want to do and you want to put the time in to configure it. But if we want to make this our My Storyboard shape, we can't just select all three of these and hit Update My Shape because uh, you're updating just the original item when you hit Update My Shape. So as long as we have three selected, how we would do that is to just create a new shape. So add this to My Shapes. And if we don't need the original anymore, we can simply delete that with the Delete key hit yes and rename this. I'm hitting F2 on my keyboard to open the text dialog. So my storyboard shape and now it's updated. So really that's all there is to the shapes component of storyboarding. It's all about creating designs, creating shapes that you can reuse however you want to. And it's actually pretty useful. There's a lot of really cool items here you can play around with to make a really good looking slider presentation. Now, as for storyboard links over here, it's something we're not going to cover too much. But what this allows you to do is basically, assuming you're connected to Microsoft and you've signed in up here in the top right, you can connect to a Team Foundation server project. And usually what that's going to be is your developers on a team have a app that they're working on. And in order to get connected, the administrator on the project would have to add you as a team member. And then you'll be able to add in information from that project, such as a list of bugs or queries that are associated with the project. And I mean database queries by that and bring them into our storyboards, our designs or just our slides in general. That's something we're not really going to cover too much here, simply because it's a bit more of a complicated topic and connects back into other aspects of Microsoft. However, if there's enough support for it, I can go ahead and create an extra presentation for this course. Just let me know if that's something you're interested in. The storyboarding help link at the very end here brings up the Microsoft website where it details out some information about what we were talking about in this video, how to storyboard and that sort of information as well as storyboard links and how that works. So you can check that out for more information though. You can see it's a little bit, well, uh, let's say a little bit more than a little bit outdated. Microsoft PowerPoint 27 or 2007 rather. The information though still generally applies. So you might find something useful there. So that's all for this video on the storyboarding tab of PowerPoint 2016. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.